Hello everyone, welcome to Authors Live. My name is Paul Kane. thank you for joining us. Now, this week it's Bookbug Week here in Scotland, which means young readers and their families all across the country are celebrating a love of songs, rhymes and picture books. And joining me in the studio this morning, we have pupils from Castleton. Let me hear you, Castleton. Yay! That was a good cheer. And Scotston. Let me hear you, Scotston. Yay! Primary schools both here in Glasgow. So thank you for coming along today. That's brilliant. Um, let's give everyone a wave. Come on, give everyone a wave. Say, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Brilliant. And as a special treat, hmm, you might not know this, they've all brought their bears with them today to enjoy the show. Ah, oh, wonder why they've brought their bears with them. We'll have to find out and wait and see. Now, we're all here today to hear from one of the UK's very best children's authors and illustrators, Ross Collins. Now, Ross, he comes from right here in Glasgow, and he's been creating books for children for more than 20 years. In fact, he's created more than 100 books. 100? That's amazing, isn't it? And many of them have won important prizes as well. So Ross will be here to talk about his hilarious book, There's a Bear on My Chair! You knew that? Well, of course, that's why you brought your bears with you, haven't you? Yeah. And the other exciting thing is that Ross is going to be showing us how to draw his favourite character. So we've all got paper, haven't we? You've got paper and pencils ready? Have you got paper and pencils ready? Great. So we'll be ready for that when it comes up later on. Because we'd really love to see some of your drawings. So if you have a class Twitter account, you can share your photos by using hashtag BBC Authors Live. Brilliant. Who's excited? Me! I'm excited. You're excited. We're all excited. So, without further delay, come on, let's give a big round of applause to Ross Collins. <laughs> Woohoo! Thanks, Ross. Lovely. Good, you. good morning, everybody. Good morning. There you go. And good morning, everybody at home as well and at school. Thank you so much for joining us here today. So, I am Ross Collins. There you go, just in case there was any confusion. I'm an author and I'm an illustrator. Um, I think I'm a wee bit more of an illustrator than an author. That's because of the number of books I've written, the number of books I've illustrated. So far, I've written, ooh, how many books have I written? Anybody else know? 500. Do you know? Um, oh, yeah, that's one of them, but no, no, no. Hang on, hang on, let me, I can remember this. Wait a sec. Mm, do, do. Ah, no, hang on. Uh, no, wait, wait, I'll get it in a second, I'll get it in a second. Nope, nope, nope. 15, 15 books, yes. I knew I had it somewhere, but I've illustrated an awful lot more. Hands up. Who's one of, who wants to guess how many books I've illustrated? What do you think? More than a hundred, yeah. How many more than a hundred? One hundred and one. That is more than a hundred. No, it's a wee bit more than that. What do you think? Five hundred. Five hundred books. How could I have illustrated? I'm only twenty-three. How could I have done that? That's outrageous. No, it's just a bit more than a hundred. What do you think? Six, that's even more than five. No, no, that's not. What do you think? Yeah? Yes? Four hundred. No, it's 127. 127 books I've illustrated. And you'll be thinking, how come he's written 15, but he's illustrated 127? And it's something to do with how much I love drawing against how much I love writing. Hands up who likes writing stories here. Hands up. Quite a few. That's really good. Hands up who likes drawing pictures. Yeah, quite a lot more of you, quite a lot more of you. Hands up who likes eating cheese in their underpants at midnight? It's just, just me. All right, okay, we won't talk about that. Right, yeah, I think you're a wee bit like me because I've been drawing pictures since I was about, what, that size? That size? I would, yeah, I was pretty, as soon as I could hold a crayon, about that size, I was drawing. I was drawing and drawing and drawing. I would draw on paper, and I would draw on the walls, and I would draw on the ceiling, on the, on the sofa. It drove my parents mental. But I loved drawing, and I practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced. I got better and better and better, until now I can draw anywhere. I can draw standing on my head, or I can draw sitting up a tree, or on a beach, or sitting on the toilet. It's an excellent place to draw. What's funny about that? 
Do you not draw sitting in the toilet? No, <laughs> You are weird. You're a bit weird. I always draw sitting in the toilet. No, no, not at all. But I can draw anywhere. Whereas writing stories, a wee bit trickier because you've got to think of a nice little idea. Nice little idea. Then you've got to think of characters. You've got to think of a beginning, a middle and an end. I can't, I can't be disco dancing or doing anything when I'm writing. I've got to be really quiet. So I find it trickier. So that's why it's really good to work with other authors because they have brilliant ideas. They have ideas I never could have and I can draw their characters as well. And I've drawn all sorts of characters over the years. Let me show you some of them just now, okay? I've drawn vampires. Do you like books about vampires? Yeah. Ooh, vampires. I've drawn germs. This is a chicken pox germ, this guy here. Does anybody, did anybody ever know that chicken pox germs have very hairy bums? No. It's true, it's a fact. This is a factual entertainment. This is a dragon that I drew. I love drawing dragons. I've drawn Medusa with snakes for hair. It can turn people to stone. I've drawn ghost elephants. This is the elephantum. Has anybody here ever heard of a ghost elephant? Oh, quite a few, yeah. Do you think you'd, be like, you'd like to be haunted by a ghost elephant? No. 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 I'm just kidding. See, it sounds like a fun thing, doesn't it? But, you know, if it eats all your peanut butter and it poos in your room, it's not such a good thing. Monsters. I've done lots of books about monsters. Giants. I've done books about giants and pirates and mermaids and witches. I've done great books about witches. Tooth fairies. Robots. I've done books about robots. You seen that one? That's from Robot Rumpus. Do you know Robot Rumpus? Cool. Platypuses. One of my most recent books. You know that one already? That's from This Zoo Is Not For You. Vikings. Does anybody like books about Vikings? Yeah. Anteaters. Mm. My most recent book. My most recent book is all about anteaters. It's called What Do Anteaters Eat? Does anybody know what anteaters eat? Nobody know? Nope. It's a great mystery. Nobody knows what anteaters eat. And, of course, hippopotamuses in pajamas. I've got to draw lots of things. But sometimes, if nobody asks me to do something or to draw something that I really want to do, I've got to do it myself. I've got to come up with a story myself. And there's one thing I always wanted to do a story about, and that's a bear. I always wanted to do a book about bears. That's it. I always wanted to do a book about bears because there's so many really cool bears in books. Here's some that you might recognize. Does anybody know who this bear is? Hands up. Who's that? Winnie the Pooh, yeah. Does anybody know what his wee pal's called? Do you know? Piglet, that's right. Piglet. Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. I loved this book when I was wee. And the great thing about Winnie the Pooh is it's just as good a book when you're an adult as it is when you're a wee. It's still really funny. It's a lovely book. What about this bear? Does anybody know who this bear is? Do you know? Paddington, yeah. What does Paddington keep under his hat? I know. Do you know? Sandwiches, what kind of sandwiches? It's important, get it right. Peanut butter. <laughs> Don't think so. Do you know? Honey sandwiches. Honey, no, no, that's not right. Come on, somebody's got to know this. Marmalade, that's it, marmalade sandwiches. I'm going to say sausage. I love Paddington. He was a great bear when I was growing up. What about this guy? Does anybody know who he is? Oh, no, somebody I haven't had, hang on. Do you know? Baloo. Baloo, from which book is Baloo from? The Jungle Book. I always thought the blue is the kind of bear that you might want to have as a really good pal. Sounds like a really good bear to hang around with. Here's a trickier one. Anybody know who this guy is? Do you know? No. No. Do you know? Sorry? Fuzzbert. Fuzzbert? That's a good name for a bear. Never heard of Fuzzbert. Nope, nope, it's not Fuzzbert. It's quite cl close, though. See, this ages me. This bear is called Fozzie Bear. He's one of the Muppets. Yeah, he's, do you know Kermit the Frog? Yeah. He's Kermit's best pal. He's a very funny bear. And what about this guy? Does anybody know who this guy is? Do you know? Kung Fu Panda, yeah. He's really good bears. And I wanted to do my own bear story, so I had to come up with my own bear. So shall I draw him for you now? 
bear that I came up with. Okay, right. So here is my bear. Now you're going to pay attention because you guys are going to be drawing this bear later, okay? So this is his head. He's got wee ears. Like that. Then he's got a big, big neck. He's got little dots for eyes. He's got a great big nose. Great big black nose. He's got a nice smile, quite a cheeky smile. There he is. And then I'm going to draw his tummy. He's got a wee fat tummy. Like that. And he's got great big arms. Great big arms. Polar bears have really big, strong arms. Like that. And although he's got great big arms, he's got really quite wee legs for some reason. There's the other leg. In the back. And he's got wee pads on his paws. Do you know, does anybody have a cat or a dog? Yeah? You know how your cat or your dog has little pads on his paws? Yeah. Little dog or cat shoes. Bears have the same thing. Helps to protect their feet when they're walking around in the snow. And then I've got his other arm coming up here. Another great big arm. Go. Got his claws. More pads on his paws. Like that. And what's he sitting on? Chair. Chair, that's right. He sat on a small chair. Now this chair is really too small for the bear because it doesn't belong to him. It belongs to somebody else. There we go. There we go. Put a wee bit of shadow in. Put some dots in the ground. If you put dots in the ground underneath your characters, it makes them look like they're standing on the ground better. There we go. So there's my bear. Now, there's my clicker. So I wanted to do a book about bears. And the first thing that I do when I'm thinking about ideas for stories is I get out my little book. All right? This is my wee book of daft ideas. Now. I have wee daft ideas all the time. I bet you guys have wee daft ideas. You've, have you had like five daft ideas already this morning? Have you had five daft ideas already this morning? Yeah? You look like you've had about 20 daft ideas already this morning. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, and the thing is, is that when you have a daft wee idea, then you might think about it, have a little laugh, maybe tell a pal, but then you'll forget about it. Whereas when I have a daft wee idea, I write it down in my wee book. Because the thing is, is that it may be a daft wee idea, but later on, if you come back to it and you look at it, you might think, do you know, there might be a story there. I might be able to make a wee story out of that. So I'll write it down. So one day, I got out my wee book, and I thought, I'd like to do a book about bears. And I thought, I thought what will I do? So there's my wee book there. So I started to write down things in my book about bears. What could I do? I thought, how will I get inspired to write a book about bears? And I thought, well, what rhymes with bear? That would be a start. So I wrote down some things that rhymes with bear. Can anybody think of things that rhymes with bear? Yeah. Chair. Chair, yeah, of course. What else, yes? Layer. Layer, yep, that's in the book. Flare. Flare, that's in the book too, yes. Chair, chair. had chair, yes. Fair. Fair, that's in the book. Hair. Hair, that's in the book, yes. 
I the, don't know what there? Is. No, there, you're quite right. There rhymes with bear. Mare. Mare, like a nightmare? Yes. Care. Care, that's in the book, yes. Get me some air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just think that is in the book, but it's a good one, though. I wrote down all these things. I wrote down share, square, care, dare, fair, hair, rare, tear, stare, wear, prayer, flare. And then I thought of the perfect one, underwear. As soon as I thought of underwear, I thought, I've got a story here. Perfect. But the one that I was interested in was chair. Because I thought, OK, there's a bear in a chair. That's quite interesting. I thought, maybe, could I do something with that? And I thought, a bear in a chair, only so interesting. And then I thought, there's a bear in my chair. And when I thought, there's a bear in my chair, I thought, well, whose chair is it? And what do they feel like that they've got a bear in their chair? Are they really happy? Oh, great, there's a bear in my chair. Well, what do you do with that? And then I thought, well, yeah, if they're angry, maybe if they're angry about it, what do they do to get the bear off their chair? And when I thought of that, I thought, OK, now, there's, there's a wee idea. Could throw a pineapple at them, but I'm not sure if that's going to work. Yeah. I thought, OK, now, there's a, there's a possible story. And because I realized, like you guys, that there's so many things that rhyme well with bear, I thought, maybe I could do the whole book where everything rhymes with bear. And I wrote down a few wee ideas. And then after that, I then drew my first picture. There's the bear. And there's the mouse. Oh, it's, is that a mouse? No. Yeah, it's not a mouse, is it? No. That's a wee boy called Dave. And that was my first idea. I was going to have the bear, and I was going to have a wee boy called Dave. There's lots of Daves. Dave's very angry about this bear in the chair. And the whole story was going to be the same as bear in my chair, but at the end, the bear was going to discover Dave at the end, and he was going to say, hey, there's a Dave in my cave. Brilliant. What a great joke. I thought it was fantastic. And then I showed it to the publisher. Hands up who knows what a publisher is. Do you know? Um, uh, something um, like when, when you show some, somebody and it like, gets published into a book. Yeah, I have to show them, the publisher, because the publisher, they put the author and the illustrator together and they make the story as good as it can be and they make the pictures as good as they, they can be. And then they put it all together. They put my drawings and my words or somebody else's words together. And then they have them all printed. That usually gets sent off to China. Don't ask me why. And then it comes back and they put it in the shops. That's what the publisher does. And I showed this idea to the publisher. And they said, we love your bear. We love your chair. We love this whole idea, but we don't like Dave. And I said, why don't you like Dave? Dave's brilliant. And they said, well, we don't like Dave because of this. So there's another book called Dave's Cave which was my joke at the end, Dave's Cave. And Dave's Cave has nothing to do with bears or chairs or any of that, but it's got that rhyme. It's got that one rhyme. And you don't want people looking at Dave's Cave and thinking, oh, Ross Collins has just copied that. So I had to change it. I had to change it. So, okay. so I thought, it can't be a wee boy called Dave. It's got to be something else. Let's make it an animal. I'll make it another animal. But it's got to be a smaller animal than a bear, because you can't just push the bear off his chair. That would be a very short book, wouldn't it? So I thought, what sort of animal will it be? I'll make it a fox. I'll make it a fox. It's got a rhyme, though, hasn't it? So what does fox rhyme with? Box. Box? Yeah, box. It rhymes with box. There's a fox in my box. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah? Socks? Shop. Shop? Mm -hmm. I don't think fox rhymes with... So no, shop. No, that's not a rhyme, no. Hmm? Yeah, no. Talks, no. There's not many rhymes for fox. I thought, no, nah, fox doesn't really work. So I thought, OK, what, what else could I have? And then I thought, what about a mouse? A mouse. Mouse is good because you've got a great big bear and a wee tiny mouse. That's funny. And then I thought of the perfect ending with a mouse, something that rhymes with mouse, that would give me that Dave in my cave ending oh. back again. Oh, don't tell anybody in case they don't know. So I had my mouse. So I then drew lots of little mice. That's the next thing that I do. I'll draw lots and lots of different versions of my characters until I get them just right. I've got to know exactly what he looks like, exactly what he feels like. I drew lots and lots of little angry mice. Then I did my first color picture. 
Now, is that bear the same as this bear? What's different? What's the main difference? Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of orange, he's kind of browny orange. That's a brown bear I drew there, but it ended up being a polar bear. Does anybody have any idea why I would want to change the color from brown to white? It's quite tricky. Yeah, yeah, well that's the end of the book, but I worked that out afterwards. This is more just to do with color. What do you think? Ah, yeah, because the background's blue. Ah, yeah, that is what it's to do with. It's to do with the backgrounds. If you were doing a book, if you wanted to draw a book about a jungle, would you make your main character a cauliflower? Yeah. Now, why wouldn't you make it a cauliflower in the jungle? Because they're not in cauliflowers, they're not in a jungle. <laughs> they're not in the jungle. Well, no, that's not. What do you think? It's a <laughs> no, it's a bad example. I wouldn't put a cauliflower in the jungle because you wouldn't really be able to see it very well, would you? <laughs> cauliflower's kind of green, jungle's green. So they blend in. You'd want your main character to be maybe red, so it would stand out. And I knew in this book I was going to keep it very simple. Simple pictures, just the mouse and the bear. So I was going to have lots of nice colours in the background. And do you think a brown bear would stand out very well and these colours? No. No? Do you think a white bear stands out? Yes. Yeah. It's all to do with having the bear stand out. So I thought, I'll make him a polar bear. And as soon as I thought, I'll make him a polar bear, the mouse had to be wearing a jumper, because it's a cold place. So I'll draw him a mouse for you now, okay? So, mouse, he's got a wee round head. He's got big ears, like that. The ears are kind of pointed downwards. When an animal isn't very happy, their ears point downwards a lot of the time. This is wee jumper. A wee tummy sticking out his jumper. He's got short little legs. He's got great big feet. And of course, he's got a tail. And because he lives in a cold place, he's got a nice Icelandic pattern on his jumper. Maybe give him a little red nose because it's quite cold. And because he's a mouse, he should have whiskers, shouldn't he? There we go. There's my mouse. All right. So now I've got my mouse. So I drew my mouse. And I thought the last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make my mouse a wee bit cuter because he's the hero of the book. You want to be on his side. So originally the mouse was quite scrawny and ratty and angry and I thought, no, he should be rounder, nicer looking so that you sympathize more with him. So I drew my grumpy little mouse. Looks a wee bit like my son, the pouty lip. And that's the book. So are you ready to read the book now? Yeah? Okay. So, there's a bear in my chair. Now, here's the first picture. Now look, the chair is empty. 
The chair's empty because the mouse is just headed off. I think he's just nipped out, just for five minutes, say. Where do you think he might have nipped off to for five minutes? What do you think? Have something to eat. Have something to eat. What would he go and get to eat? What do you think? Cheese. Cheese. A wee bit of cheese. Think he'd go to his kitchen or think he'd go to the shops? Mm. Off to his kitchen, what do you think? Think he'll get a pair? Going to get a pair? Yeah, he might have gone to get a pair. I don't know. What do you think? Um, I forgot. Yeah, it's okay. What do you think? Going for a wee walk, a wee stroll, just to stretch his legs, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's the adverts on the TV. He's just snipped out. Maybe he's gone for a pee. Something like that. I don't know. He's just snipped out. Either way, he's just snipped out. And who's spotted that the chair is free? A bear. Yeah. So, when the mouse comes back, he discovers. Hmm. There's a bear in my chair. Hmm. Does he look very happy about this? No. 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 no, not too happy at all. So, the mouse says, he is so big, it's hard to share. There isn't any room to spare. We do not make a perfect pair, a mouse and bear with just one chair. So the mouse is trying to push the bear off of the chair. Do you think he's going to manage to do that? No. No, no. He's a wee bit wee to do that, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Wee bit wee. Do you think you could push a bear off of a chair? I'll just, I'll just really? Do you think you could do that? Yes. You think you're big enough to push a polar bear, polar bear off of a chair? No. I'm just giant. Really? I don't think I could push a polar bear off a chair. They're huge. No. No, too weird. No. I don't, either way, the mouse can't do it. The mouse is really too wee to push a polar bear off a chair. So he's going to have to think of other ways to get the bear off his chair. So the mouse says, when I give him a nasty glare, he seems completely unaware. I don't know what he's doing there, that bear who's sitting on my chair. So the mouse has got himself a nice set of ladders. Where are the ladders? Just like that. So he's got a nice set of ladders, he's climbed right up to the top, and he's giving the bear a really nasty glare in the same island. Could you give me a really nasty glare? Oh, that's quite nasty. Oh, that's horrible. That's it. No, no, stop doing that image of it. Oh, that, no, that's, that's just downright sinister. That's, oh, right, no, yep. Yep, nope, 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 nope. Okay, okay, stop with the nasty glares. Stop, 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 stop. Nope, stop. Stop immediately. That's way too nasty a glare. I think the bear might have got off the chair for all these nasty glares, but he's not interested in the mouse, is he? Because what's he doing? What's the bear doing? Reading a newspaper, yeah. Did you know that bears read newspapers? No. Yeah. Oh, no, they, they completely read newspapers, that's what they do in their spare time. Either way, is he paying any attention to the mouse? No, no, no he's not, is he? So, that's not worked. And the thing is, is that the mouse has to admit that he's quite impressed with some aspects of the bear. And the mouse says, I must admit he has some flair. He has fine taste and leisure wear. I'm fond of how he does his hair, but still I wish he was not there. So, do you like the bear's leisure wear? Yes. Pretty cool. Do you like his hair? Yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Still, he still wants him off of the chair, doesn't he? Okay. So, the mouse says, I'll try to tempt him with a pear to lure him from my favorite chair, but he just leaves it sitting there. Why won't he go back to his lair? You'd think that a bear would be tempted off of a chair with a pear, wouldn't you? No. No? Really? Hmm. Okay. All right. So that's not worked either, has it? So he's going to have to think of something else. Perhaps if I give him a scare, I'll jump out in my underwear. But no, of course, he does not care that stinky bear sat on my chair. So that's not worked either, has it? No. 
And what's the bear doing? Yeah, he's just on his phone, isn't he? Some Snapchat or Snapchat or something. I don't know. Whatever the kids are doing these days. I don't know. It's not working. So then the mouse says, I understand that bears are rare. I know they need the utmost care. I know all that. I am aware. But still, I cannot stand this bear. So the bear's now got a t-shirt on that says endangered. Do you happen to know what endangered means? Anyone? Do you know? Yeah, means there's not that many of them, is there? How many polar bears did you see on your way to school this morning? None. Exactly. You don't get many polar bears around anymore. There used to be tons of polar bears on my way to school, but they're all gone. So at that point, the mouse has kind of run out of things to do. He doesn't know what to do, and he's just he's very sad. He's just sitting in the corner, and he's sad. And he's steaming away, and he just doesn't really know what to do, and the bear the bear, I think, is looking quite happy because the bear knows that if he annoys the mouse enough, the mouse will eventually explode. And the mouse shouts, that's it. I'm done, I do declare. This bear has led me to despair. It is not fair. It is not fair. I'm going now. I don't know where. Hmm. And the bear, do you think the bear's happy about this? Yeah. The bear's delighted. But the thing is, is that when the mouse decides to go, there's really no point to the bear sitting on the chair anymore, is there? Because, you know, it's no fun to be had. So the bear gets off the chair. Gets off the chair, has a little look, makes sure the mouse is gone, and he heads home. What sort of house does the bear have? An igloo. And when the bear gets back to his house, what does he discover? Hey. There's a mouse in my house. Mm. Do you think the mouse is one? Yeah, I think he's one. So, now, that's the story. Did you like that? Yeah. Excellent. Now, do you think that you can draw the bear now? No. No? OK, well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to show you how to draw the bear. Are you all up for that? Yeah. Brilliant. OK, so get out your paper and your pens. Everybody at school and at home, you get out your paper and pens as well, okay? You all ready? I'm going to show you how to do it, step by step. So, <clears throat> first thing to do, how are you at drawing eggs? Eggs? Any good at drawing eggs? Yeah. Right, okay. I want you to draw a nice big egg right in the middle of your page. Yep. Yep, right in the middle of the page. Nice big egg. How are you all doing with that? Nice big egg? Everybody at school? All drawing nice big eggs? Excellent. I'm seeing some good eggs there. Right, now, how are you at drawing sausages? Any good at drawing sausages? Right. I want a nice big sausage on top of the egg. Great big sausage on top of the egg. There we go. How are we getting on? It's like a nice breakfast. Eggs and sausage. Doing okay? Okay. Now, next thing is the arms. Now remember I said he had great big arms? So we want to draw a nice big arm at the side of the egg and another big arm on this side of the egg. Okay, are we getting on? Looking good, nice, very good. Very good, you're doing your own thing. Excellent. Now, remember I said you had really big arms but he's got really wee legs. So you want a wee leg here, and another wee leg here. OK, two wee legs at the bottom of your eggs. OK, looking good. 
Nice, I like that. Very hairy bear, excellent. How are we getting on at school? Doing okay? Excellent. Okay, now, we've got all the wee details to put on. So, top of the head, you've got his little ears. Ears on top of the head. And we've got his eyes. Remember, little dots for eyes. Great big nose. Cheeky smile. And then, we've got his claws. Got to put on all his claws. Pads in his paws, remember? Nice pads in the paws. Pads in his feet as well. There he is. And if you've got far enough with that, then you can draw his chair. It doesn't have to be the chair in the book. You guys might like to do a sofa, or an armchair, or a rocking chair, or a bean bag. Doesn't matter, whatever you fancy. There we go. How are we getting on? Oh, nice. Good little legs. I'm liking that. Oh, good pads. I really like all the wee details. Very nice. Very nice. Ooh, he's got the fluffiest ears I've seen today. Splendid. Oh, I'm liking him. He is like the happiest bear I've seen. Very good. Brilliant. How are we getting on at school? Oh, somebody's shown, shown me. Oh, nice. Yeah. He's a kind of a, he's a very fat bear, isn't he? He's been eating lots of pears. Excellent, fuzziest bear today. Very good. This is excellent. Ears. We need some ears on this guy. He's missing some ears. What sort of chair is that? Oh, nice. Okay. And remember, if you want to take these home, you want to colour them in, you colour in the backgrounds and then you get a nice white polar bear, okay? And if you're feeling really confident, you can draw a mouse as well. How are you getting on? Very good. Oh, nice. What's our chair, John? This is a cool chair. Brilliant. Let's see. That is a gigantic chair. The BBC Bedtime Stories chair. Ah, excellent. Nice, very good. Tiny bee legs, very good. Brilliant. And I am going to draw a quick wee mouse in here. Just at the last minute. We mouse too. There we go. Brilliant. You hold up all your drawings? Let's see them all. Fantastic. Oh, he's great. He's really good. Really good. Wow. Cool. Paul, look at these drawings. That's amazing. Well, sadly, we've come to the end of today's event, haven't we? Ah. Was that fantastic, everyone? Yeah. It was, it was brilliant, isn't it? Ross, thank you so much for giving us an insight into what it takes to create a, a, pitch, a picture book. Yeah. And wasn't that fantastic getting this drawing masterclass as well? I love all these brilliant bears. I think we'll have lots of brilliant bears at home and at school as well. So come on, let's give an enormous round of applause to Ross. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, Ross's event will soon be available to watch again along with all our other previous authors at www.scottishbooktrust.com forward slash authors live. So please look out for that. Now, just before we go, we have one final treat. 
We've been speaking to pupils at St Mark's Primary in Barhead and asking their ideas for funny animal rhymes. Just like there's a bear on my chair. Ah. So maybe they'll inspire you to come up with some kind of stories of your own. Well, we'll see you again soon for more Authors Live. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, -bye. Let's wave. Bye, everyone. Bye. I'm a dog. I bark. I love to run in the park. I'm a panther. I purr when you stroke my fur. I am a lion king and I sing. I'm a tiger. I grow when I'm on the pro. I'm an anaconda. I hiss and I sound like this. I'm a panda. I love bamboo and I have a tattoo. I am a penguin, I squawk when I go for a walk. I am a guinea pig, I squeak when I play hide and seek.